Rick, in case there are people who've bought this and they've not really heard Carl before, um, remember we were talking a while back about the uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV program Inside the Actors Studio, oh, yeah. where the host James Lipton always asks a ser- the same questions to every guest, and it's just supposed to sort of you know get their creative you know juices flowing, their mind working. We we did ask Carl some of them. We we never completed the questionnaire. Oh, let's I carry I'd on fire with that, a few then. more at him, and that'll also uh, introduce some um, people to the way his mind works mm. a little bit. Okay. Question six. What sound or noise do you love, Carl? Um, there isn't really one that, that I love. Nice noises, yeah. like the ones you get. Like, I like going in the park, right? And you go, oh, that's nice, isn't it? And you get, like, yeah. bird noises and stuff. Give me your fucking wallet! But then, like... Things like nice yeah. noises like that, and... Uh, uh, but, but, but... You, 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 you fucking... You can't! Yeah, why did you fucking sleep with her? It's lovely in the park, isn't it? But with those bird noises comes a bit of stress, right? Because I was in there the other day, and uh, like, like I say, little bird noises and that, and a little robin was there, and I thought that's odd. That's out early, right? Because it's like sort of summertime and that. Sure. And then I thought, oh, that's nice, and I was watching it, and then it got like a little worm, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, put it down, right? And- <laughs> Sorry, whoa! What do you mean? Because Why are you interfering? I'd- Why were you interfering in nature with a with a robin taking a worm? Just because it, it it was a nice sunny day and that, and I thought, wor- what, you see, worms normally come out when it's raining, don't they? And you go, well, I bet they're happy to die, in a way, because it's chucking it down. It's miserable. They come to the top of the soil, then, don't they? Yeah. When it's miserable, but it was a sunny day. Unless they don't drown, I assume. No, it's not that, is it? It's just that they they hear the water or something falling on the ground, and they go, "What's going on?" And they come up to see what's happening. <laughs> what? No, no way. But why do they come up when they think it's raining? Because they're hearing like knocking on their their land, and they're going, "Who's that?" And they come up. <laughs> Sorry, wait. wait a minute. But why do you think they come up when it's raining? Because they're hearing the the, the noise of the yes, rain. Yes, but they know what it is. What am I doing? Why am I talking like him? Of course, they don't know what it is. I, look, can worms th- hear stuff? Yeah. Well, they, they got. <laughs> you don't know anything, Carl. But they, I, assume, I assume they can sense vibrations and yes. so on, but they can't yeah. hear in the way we hear. No, they of course they ears, can't. Do they? Of course they can't. Well, whatever, right? So all I'm saying is that. But came what was up- this thing about these worms? They hear the tapping and go, oh, "What's that?" Right. Tell us. Okay. So, so start. You're a worm. Okay. It starts raining. Tell me your thought process. Well, you just kind of you're down there. You can't see anything. It's dark anyway. Yeah. So and you, you, you hear eyes. about this, don't you? You hear about blind people. I've got really good ears. And it's no. the same with a word. No, they do. It's an extra sense. They no, say. it's not. It's, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. They start getting used to to uh, relying on them more, but it doesn't. So you don't turn into a uh, bionic woman because you lose your eyes. No, but you do because you use them more. If you use something a lot, you get better at it. So their ears are good. So all I'm saying is, so this rain's coming down. <laughs> I don't know who to believe here, Rick. The, the rain's coming down on the land. The worm goes, "What's going on?" <laughs> What's going on? He wiggles up to the top. So what does he do? So it, so it, it goes up and it, it sort of sees it's raining and then it goes back down again, doesn't it? But that's that's what I'm saying about. The what do you mean? What do you? What is? Sorry. What is this world where he goes? Oh, it's just rain again. Oh, so that's that's the four hundredth time I've been caught out this year. It's rain. I'll remember next time. I won't come up. I, 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 what do you think a, a worm is capable of in terms of cognitive thought? What do you mean? Well, a worm can basically. Uh, tell certain chemicals and certain light patterns. That's a, that's all it is, really. Yeah, and, and it's and not thinking. It's not choosing its favourite food. But you it's, don't know that. It's the same way you're saying to me. I don't know what a worm's thinking. You don't know what it's thinking. I know it's not thinking. You don't know that though. Is what I'm saying. You don't know what things are thinking. Everything thinks. No, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, the thinking. There's something in this room that's not. All right. What about <laughs> this one then? What about um, what about flowers? Do you think they've got a a mind, a, a feeling? Because here's here's something that again they they use phototropism. They go towards the sun. They 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 close and All open. Right, well, Can you stop grow. using long words, Rick? Like sun. Listen. <laughs> I was. Do you know I've been to my mum and dad's? Right. I was yeah. talking to my mum about stuff. All right. And she was saying how um, this flower uh, solved a crime. What happened was there was a murder yeah. right, in an office, 
So they said it's obvious that someone who works in the office did this murder because that person's only a sort of a typist. He has, you know, they've done nothing wrong. So they said, that's narrowed it down, right? So this flower man came in and he said, I can sort this out for you. Mm. So they said, what do you mean? He said, well, during the murder, the plant was knocked off the cabinet, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Um, and he had some special wires that he can put on special the flower. Special wires, yeah. On the flower, and it's sort of shaking and stuff. Because even though you can't see it, flowers pick up bad vibes and what have you. If you shake a plant, it doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. Right? So what happened was, uh, he said, right, what we'll do, we'll put the plant back on the shelf, yep. we'll water it, we'll calm it down, <laughs> then get... Give it a nice <laughs> cup of tea. Then get every Think, member of staff right, to come right. in the room yeah. and just go near the flower. Right. So don't tell them... So like a line-up for the flower? Kind yeah. of. Kind of like a line-up. Yeah, but sure. don't tell them what we're doing. Just send them yeah. in and say, stand by that cabinet where yeah. the murder happened and what have you. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long day. They were getting through a lot of staff. It was a big office block. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were going, this isn't working. You know, the flower's not budging. Mm. Suddenly, they get into like the last part of the day when they were almost giving up. They call in a sketch artist. The, pla- the plant gives them a... Some, some caretaker fella. Oh. Um, caretaker, yeah. Said, go over there. Was it, you know, was it an so, old man that, I mean, because Scooby-Doo didn't like him from the beginning. <laughs> no. So, uh, you know, uh, is that, that, why is that janitor so evil? The, they send the caretaker over to the plant. He's going, you know, he's thinking I've got away with this. Of course. Yeah. Plant starts shaking, what have you. They did him. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute then. So, was there any other evidence? Uh, was that the only evidence they used in the trial? Well, no, it's one of them things, though. Imagine it, if you're that caretaker and you're thinking, I've got away with this, then suddenly a plant grasses you up. You weren't expecting that. So suddenly you're <laughs> off guard. And you go, you go, okay, 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 can't get that chrysanthemum away from me, I did it. You're talking absolute bollocks. That was one of the most <laughs> nonsense pieces of shit I've ever heard but in anyway, my life. Listen, well, it happened, but... It didn't happen. Said it. But what I was saying is about the worm, right, the worm... That I saw, and like I say, it was a sunny day. I thought, you know, what's that doing up here and what have you? So, anyway, so this robin that I saw that was eating the worm, it had hold of it, and I thought it said sunny day and that, give the worm a break, sort of thing. So I went, oh, yeah, yeah, like that. And it sort of dropped it in shock. But then when it realised I wasn't that near it, it picked it up again and swallowed it. And I just thought, oh. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, no. I just thought it's a sunny day and everything. Normally, birds are nice noises that I like, and yet there it is going about wrecking lives. What you- <laughs> wrecking lives! It was a no, worm. It just, no, but it just swallowed it really quickly, and that. And I thought that's life, isn't it? That's that's what life is like. One minute it's there, then it's then it's not. I just thought there's the worm. It, it came out. It was happy. It didn't know what was going on, and the it had an extra chance. The the robin dropped it. And then he got it again and ate it, and I just, just made me a bit fed up. Well, do you know why, don't you? You couldn't outwit a robin. You People... put it off, but then it won. But... That's, that's the terrible thing, isn't it? The worm was going, oh, God, Carl Pilkington. So that's, that's who's been sent to save me, is it, God? You've sent Carl Pilkington, oh, I'm dead. That's it, okay, eat me. But all I'm saying is our bird noises are normally quite relaxing, but not for the worm. Unbelievable. That was one question. Question seven. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, as me or as a as a worm. I don't know what you mean. What you, do you mean? Why would, the, I, why would we be asking a worm? I've never heard an actor say that to James Lipton. When he says, um, what noise do you hate? What, as me or a worm? No, well, but all I'm saying is because of my last question, that's what I was saying. A bird noise is relaxing to me. Right. Well, it's not anymore because I think of all the deaths and stuff that that <laughs> go around that. So now you hate the sound of birds. I'm just saying it's changed my view on it. It's so like it's like anything, isn't it? Every every noise can mean a disaster <laughs> somewhere. Can it? Why? Why? Think why? of some other noises you like. Okay, what's a, a, a lovely noise? No, hang on. Why would the sound of laughter, people laughing, why would that suddenly cause? Why would that also signify disaster? Um. Asylums. Yeah. That's depressing, isn't it? They're always laughing in asylums. But it's a scary laugh, isn't it? What? It's like, oh. If you wake up in the night by the sound of, like, a baby laughing. <laughs> a baby laughing! No, if I had a, ba- if I had a baby, right, yeah. and Suzanne was out, she'd work nights or something. <laughs> yeah! And I'd nodded off, I'd put the baby to sleep. Yeah. 
and then it's three in the morning and I'm woken up by the sound of a baby laughing, that would terrify me. <laughs> oh, is this that? I just think the baby's sitting up in a chair like Chucky going, <laughs> Well, no, the... <laughs> <laughs> I think the baby's reading his diary. <laughs> Thinking, oh Christ, this is my father. <laughs> I just hope I'm adopted. Oh God, a baby laughing. Oh God. Come on. No, no, I'm not getting off this subject. Right. So what other sounds? Right. What other sounds? Right. right. More, more you like. Um, well, come on, there must be sounds you like. No, the sounds, the sounds yeah. he hates are even more fascinating. <laughs> uh, oh, this terrifying, God. haunting oh. baby laugh. I don't think you can pick any sound and say, I like that. I, do, I, I imagine we don't like um, the sound of a tiger, uh, evolutionary speaking. That's probably not a good sound to hear. But there are obviously some calming noises because, you know, when your mother sings you a nursery rhyme or something when you're a kid, you your know, mother's calming. Voice. Of course, your mother's voice. That That's probably pre-programmed for you to to like it yeah so it, there's a time and a place a lion's roar or whatever you just mentioned a tiger growling it's all right if if you're in a zoo you go oh, look at that <laughs> so there's a time and a place for everything isn't there yeah i don't know what that point is i don't know how no, that no. relates because i mean I, I live in london if i woke up and heard the sea i'd be worried <laughs> I'd be, what's, what's going on <laughs> you're like the worm who hears the rain question eight what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? This is you as you, not as you as a worm. <sighs> but have I had the training? Oh, for f- oh. No, well, I've said before, haven't I, about maybe having a go at an operation. <laughs> I don't know why it leaps from where... It leaps from no ambition, where if he could have a job, it would... Uh, his best job he's ever had is a paper round, and if he could have a job, he'd, like, go to the cobbler once a week and then walk a dog, to, I'd like to have a go at thoracic surgery. No, I'm just saying, I bet it's a, like, we do this, and, you know, some people like listening to it and what have you, and you go, fair enough, but I never feel like I'm doing anything of any worth. No, you're absolutely right there. But, if you're going into, uh, uh, like, an hospital, which are places that are pretty miserable anyway, as a, as an office space, do you know what I mean, when you're in waiting rooms and that, I'd, like, I'd hate to have my office in, uh, you know, A&E. Yeah, that's what I mean, there's loads of ill people coming in, they're normally upset, do you know what I mean? It's depre- even if the sun's out, it's a depressing building, isn't it? There's so people not- handcuffed to policemen. Not only have you got to go in that building and work in it, but you've then got the pressure of changing a lung or whatever I've said before. Right? Changing a lung, yeah. But I'd like to have a go at it so I can say... You've done it. I've done that. So uh, under what circumstances, in, in what world, do you think anyone's going to let you have a go at changing a lung and that? Um, Jim will fix it? No, I'm just saying the Comic way... Comic relief. But the way the world is, and the way that there's more and more people, more and more doctors are needed. I mean, it's already happening now that people are doing jobs that they're not really qualified for because they get they get sort of, uh, what's the word? Sort of uppered too early. Uppered. <laughs> <laughs> uppered! Uppered! I love the fact... It's basic language. It's like... It, I, I, it's unbelievable. It's like there are only sort of like 50 words in the English language, so he has to like, you know, change them and customise them. Uppered. Do you know he, what I mean? They, promoted. Yeah, promoted. Yeah. They, get, they get promoted I'd prefer to Uppered. Uppered's great. So, Why so, was I not Uppered? Unbelievable. So do you know what I mean? I think because, because more and more people are knocking about, we need more and more doctors, yeah. you get a job in a doctor's, you're going to be promoted sooner now, I think. Yeah. Well, I, what I'd do is I'd, I'd, I'd probably upper you and then... Um, what's the word? You go away them. You, I think it is. You go away them. You, you, you leave the door. You, you leave the door. You fire them. That's it. That's the word. For. So I'd, I'd up at you and go away the doctor, if anything. Yeah. But I've been to. Uh, you know, how I don't like going to the doctors and stuff. Yeah. Because right? um, you're always scared that they might investigate below the bridge. Yeah, but I checked on that before I signed up to it, and then they said, right, before we can take you on as a patient, um, you've got to have a health check. Right, which I thought was odd, because it's almost like saying, if you're ill, you can't be having you coming here. Right? But I said, right, okay, fair enough, What what is this health check? And he said, oh, you know, we'll just check your body out and make sure you're fit and healthy. And I thought, that isn't enough information. You know, I want to know if it's the old finger trick. <laughs> or and, and I said, what what do you mean, though? When you said health check, what do you do? And uh, she said, oh, it's just, I think she knew what I was getting at. And right. she said, oh, it's just the blood pressure... Uh, your eye, your eye, your weight, uh, 
Okay. That's about it. So I went went and had it and stuff. But you had to, before you sort of said, right, I want this doctor, they give you loads of forms to fill out, right? And um, one of the things they did was, uh, if you die, <laughs> what do you want to give away? Right, like a donor. Mm. And it had like, um, uh, it's basically everything you've got in you. It was all your main bits. Your liver, your heart, your kidney, uh, and what have you. And I thought, I, I, was, I really thought about it for 40 minutes or so. I didn't just rush into it. I was sat there thinking, you know, if I'm dead, does it matter and stuff? But I was really concerned when it said about the eyes. <laughs> right. Right. Why? What do you mean? What? Because can they have your eyes after you die? It was, it was, I think it was fourth on the list. Right. So they just sort of crammed it in. I think they know everybody's a bit cautious about giving no, their eyes no, away. No, no one cares more about the eyes than the liver or the... Uh, the why do you care about uh, uh, giving your eyes away just, when you're just, dead? Just because of that thing of, you know, we don't know for sure yet. I know that you poo-poo it, but the afterlife thing... Right, they're, 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 yeah, but yeah. you don't you don't know for sure if. Well, if what, why why would there be? How would there be? How would it work? Why why do you think there's an afterlife? Why do you think there's why? Uh, because uh, we're here already. It blows my mind that we're wandering about this planet anyway. Do you know what I mean? The fact that we're here just by gravity not, blows your mind, Carl. No, but do you know what I mean? The the fact of your mum and dad have it away, and then you just pop out, and it's like, how's that happened? And then it's <laughs> well, the what fact happens that, is the father <laughs> inserts his. No, but but what I mean is. You know, not just that bit. The, uh, how I've said before about my heart just sort of pumping away on its own. No one's keeping an eye on it. It's not plugged into anything. No. And yet, I want to move my hand like that, and it does it. Yeah. That blows me away, right? Yeah. You, I mean, you're still so, worried about whether you control your brain or the brain controls you. So what I'm saying is, how do you know what goes on after life? Because, do you know what I mean? If so, this, what, so, what, so why in an afterlife do, do, would you want your... Eyes more than your liver and your kidneys and your lungs and your heart. Because ghosts don't eat, do they? So you don't need all your liver and your kidneys and stuff, because they're only there to sort your food out. But your eyes, if you're a ghost, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe in the afterlife I might be treated to a pair of eyes. But the fact of... Wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff. <laughs> 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 oh God! Oh, it's amazing. So oh, that's an amazing image. So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but 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 why? I don't understand. In your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you you ghost you, this ghostly car? Why can he survive without a heart, but he can't survive without eyes? What? Why? Do you see what I mean? Surely if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no, because, the, the body no, because, because you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think it, when you're a ghost, say like how they've seen ghosts in... Um, right, could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo-jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when, you know, when they see ghosts in, like, old castles and stuff, mm. yeah. they've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, right, years ago. But they're carrying it around normally under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you take the eyes out... But, Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's, it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it, it does. It just happens it, to be carrying it around because it, no, it you know, wants to keep it with it. The ghost it, is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in... Oh, what, who makes it, these rules? The way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever. Even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghosts that you see never wear modern clothes, so they, it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> Now, God. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they stuck with it. So that's why what did I'm you see cavemen ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about eighteen thirty, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with your trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your ass? But why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done. If that's you no, 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 no. A... But you, uh, uh, you might have both been suddenly. Um, Killed in a in a terrible disaster. Yeah, a meteorite hit you. A meteorite hit you, or the, well, you that's, that's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round bent forward. Going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You start going oh, and that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> they, they have to put you to to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going? Are you go so I so I get the vicar round. Um, 
Okay, well, this See, is- I don't want to get caught with my with someone <laughs> with their finger up my ass when the vicar's come round. The last thing I want to get, catch me is the vicar coming oh, in when I've got a, a yeah. doctor's finger up my ass. I usually hide in the wardrobe yeah, when that happens. Whenever that happens. So listen, oh, so it. no, wait, 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 wait. So, so you're you're haunting, right? It's years later. It's a hundred years later. You're 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 around this doctor's surgery, and there's people coming, and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's it's twenty seventy three, and they, they go, vicar. Vicar. They go, Vicar, there's a, there's a, a strange ghostly apparition. It's, it looks like an old doctor, right, and he's got his fingers up this sort of like little, it's like a chimpanzee but with a shaved head. No, no, but the doctor wouldn't be, are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well? They as you? Both, yeah, you both yeah, die. Yeah, you die at the same time with his finger up your ass, and so you're forever, you're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers around your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. <laughs> Here's, what here's a load of one. bollocks this, <laughs> this is. This is extraordinary. No, but listen, <laughs> listen, listen to this. Listen to this. This right. is a good one. Oh, I'd this like will to convince see us. This yeah, this way, okay. Answer this. This will be proof. Go on. I watched a programme the other week about, mm. um, dead people. Of course you did. Right? And it was, it was people who had been found in their house, you know, they haven't got any family. Yeah. Um, they died, sat in their armchair. Nobody's knocking on the door, ringing them and checking if they're alright. Yeah. Right? So they die. Yeah. And they rot away in a chair. Oh. People, you know, the next door neighbour called up called up whoever you call up for dead people and go there's a dead body next door it's stinking can you come and get rid of it right did mm. go in and i forget what service that is <laughs> i don't know where you find that in the yellow pages <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a good business though yeah. isn't it hello corpse <laughs> removal <laughs> stinky dead people so they go in there's flies everywhere of course there is yeah the doors and the windows are shut where are them flies from is what there- do you mean do you know that thing, reincarnation? Yeah. I think there it is. There's an example of it. How there was no flies in there. A body rots yeah. away. Out of the body comes flies. So you live yes. on. Or out of the body comes flies from the maggots that were in the body. Well, okay. Maggot then. So we've, we've gone on. We've lived on. What, what do you mean? The, the, I'm just the saying fly isn't a on. reincarnation of the maggot. The maggot is the larval stage of the fly. No, but I'm, forget all the maggot fly. Right. Think about going from man to a fly. What are you talking about? I'm saying the windows and the doors on this house were shut, shut yeah. tight. Yeah, no, your no question flies is, had got in. They what, hadn't got in. They had got, got in. They hadn't. They'd they, already there. We're surrounded by them. We've probably got fly eggs on us now. Well, all, all I'm saying is, it's weird that them flies were in there when they weren't in there. I don't think this fella would have had loads of fly eggs on him. But I just think it's a bit what, odd. Why? What do you mean? I just think it, <laughs> there was loads of them. You didn't see it. But it only takes one fly to lay loads of eggs. Yeah, but... So you think it's wiser to ignore Ricky's answer and go with your ghostly supernatural reincarnation one? You think that's the that's the wise, sensible way to go? I just this? think it's a bit odd how every time someone's got fly eggs on them. So, so, everybody... so that, to you, is uh, uh, less of a chance of happening than when you die, some of you turns into flies. Fly parts. Well, that happened when my dad chucked a turkey away in a bin. And it was only in there for about a day. I went to go and put, like, a crisp packet in the bin at the end of the garden. And what yeah. have you. Picked the lid off, full of flies. Yeah. Now, the the bid lin, the lid bin, the bin lid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a constant fight with his own brain. <laughs> was was fairly sealed and what have you. Yeah. Again, it's it's the turkey living on. No, it's not. We're it's all the fact the that while it was out on the table... It hadn't been out on the table. We didn't eat in the end because it had feathers on it. My mum said, I'm not doing that. Yeah, well, the... <laughs> but... What do you mean it had feathers on it? My dad not... got it off a mate and said, yeah, I've got this for Christmas. But it was yeah. still it was still virtually alive. And my mum <laughs> said, oh, I'll just get one from the supermarket. So we put it in the bin. Yeah. So <laughs> what I'm saying is... The I'm next... telling you, the, the eggs were already on it, mate. It's just an idea I've had. It's a theory. Everyone's allowed one. But it's bollocks. Mm. Back to the Inside the Actors Studio questions. Question nine. What profession, Carl, would you not like to do? Um, you see, in a way, some bad jobs are good jobs in a way. Because, one, it means that when you have holiday, you really appreciate it. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, you see, I always thought, like, when um, when I had a job where I, I used to have to do, like, four hours a night when I worked through the night, I only had four hours to do from two in the morning till six, right? 
but it meant that when I was on holiday, I never really appreciated it because between two and six, I'd be asleep anyway. So unless I got up at two in the morning and went, oh, I'm relaxing now instead of working, you don't get the full... I don't know what you're talking about. I <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. The rules that you live by about what you can enjoy no, and what you can't. What's good with a holiday, right? If you work, say if you work in a factory from eight in the morning to eight at night, yeah. packing socks into a, a rubber bag, right? Between eight and, what time did I say me? Eight. Shift <laughs> eight, eight. It's a 12 hour, it's a 12 hour <laughs> sock packing job. It is murder. <laughs> I also like it socks into a rubber bag. <laughs> yeah. I love to get my socks in a rubber bag. <laughs> and, uh, and also he forgot he forgot the timings immediately. He said the sentence then it went out of his head. It's like, it's like, if you're packing your from eight, what time did I say it was? What are they packing? So all right, so you're a sock stuffer, you do a twelve hour shift. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, got it. So, you go, oh, come on, Rita, no more socks for me. I don't want to see another sock for a week. Have you got the rubber bag? Don't bring the rubber bag. That's the last thing I want to see. So what I mean is, when you're on the beach, right, by the sea, mm. between eight and eight, you're thinking, oh, this time yesterday I was packing socks in a rubber bag. And you can really enjoy it. You can keep going... Oh, an hour late you can go. Oh, I was packing yeah. socks yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you can I'm keep glad you enjoyed it, love. Will you stop going about the fucking socks? <laughs> We're on holiday. <laughs> I don't think this marriage is going to last. <laughs> oh, look, Rita. I was. I know you were packing fucking socks yesterday. <laughs> Let's not fucking talk about it for a week. You boring bastard. <laughs> oh, Rita, what? <laughs> this time is. I know you were packing fucking socks in a rubber hunting bag. No, I was having lunch at this time, you fucking slut. Oh, Christ almighty! <sighs> so what I was saying is, I was when I was working from two in the morning till six, six. to really enjoy, enjoy being off, off from there, if I was on holiday... You'd have to get up in the middle of the night... To go, oh, this time yesterday this is time I was playing... playing Surely fun. the joy is not having to get up in the middle of the night. Then when you get up and thought, God, thank God I didn't have to get up in the middle of the night like I usually do, I slept through like a normal person. Surely that's no, the joy. I think the joy is going... Oh, I'm normally doing this at this time. But that's ridiculous, because if you worked, right, till 6am, you presumably went to bed and slept in till sort of 3 in the afternoon or something, yeah? Uh, so depends. you'd be up at 10am going, wow, usually I'm asleep, so you get it then. So you're talking shit again. And the final question from the Inside the Actor's Studio questionnaire. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Is that how it works? Oh. oh. No, what I'm, do you mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know. Uh, you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates. I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> if he owns the place, what's he doing there? He could put well, anyone on it. It's St. Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. Right, so it's him asking me. Okay, well, let's say it's St. No, Peter. No, no, no. You go through the gate, Peter goes, oh, you expected, um, he's got an appointment, we're going through the guard, you go through the guard, go through a few doors, go up, up, up the... the the top floor, right past the executive washroom, into his big office, okay, that overlooks the universe. And God okay. says, why have you got a doctor with his finger up your arm? <laughs> <laughs> and you go, well, you should know, you caused it. <laughs> so what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like God to say to you at that point? He might offer you great wisdom, he might ask you a question, he might tell you something. What would you like him to say? Um, and is this just one, one visit? This is like, because it's my first day. Yeah, it's the first day, yeah. him. You get in chat with him, yeah. But after that, I don't. Well, you I might bump him into him at the, the, odd, the, the you know, the, the Christmas uh, the, party, the AGM. But I'm not yeah. going to be myself, am I? I'm going to be in shock a little bit, because it's like, I mean, I, I'm not comfortable on the first day of holiday. Because you're in different surroundings, the hotel, you've got to get used to where everything is. Yeah. So he's okay. not going to get the best out of me. Well, to be no, honest. but you have eternal bliss. Yeah, you've got, you yeah, you got, got a long time to get to know you. And he knows everything anyway, so don't worry about it. So what's, why is he seeing me then? What's the f what would you want God to say to you? So you walk in there, you're, you're happy with it because you understand now you're dead and well, it's a whole new world and everything's all right, you feel great. Like, what am I saying? Well, anyway. I'm going along with this dribble. Yes. What would you like God to say to you? Um. All right. Probably just just say, oh, um, uh, you've done well in that in your life. Um, 
you never did anybody any harm. Um, so, welcome to the to Evan. Um, any problems, give us a shout. Um, you know, here's a little layout of, of like a, you know, like a little map. It's kind of like... I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any harm. That's, that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So hang on, he's giving you a little map. So he's giving you a little map of the a area. Map, it's and big. he'll sort of say, this is where you go for this, this is where you go for that. Um, I'd, I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then? Or is this just like another pl- planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit, sort of, ch- you know, a little bit... A bit cagey. Yeah. A little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because, to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even want to! No, but oh, because the thing is, if you've done all, I've done all that in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah. Otherwise, okay. what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. So, who's the worst person? You go to heaven, and it's all great, and God goes, oh, look, and here's so-and-so, and you go, oh, f- f- I know, what's he doing here? Yeah. Um, but why Why would he be introducing me to that one? Oh. No, I'm saying, who's the worst person you'd like to see? And Who go, do you just not want to encounter in heaven? Um... What if what if he said, right, Carl, you're in heaven, but uh, we've got to teach you a lesson. You're a bit cruel to freaks. Here's Pillow Man. Here's the three-legged juggler. Here's the Elephant Man. They've got a few questions. Yeah, that, ma- that'd be all right. That'd elephant be fair Man enough. goes, why did you talk about me like that? I'd say I never had a go at you. Why did you talk about me eating buns? But then I'd, I'd get a bit annoyed with God. I'd, I'd turn Elephant Man onto God. I'd say, well, hang on a minute. At least when he put his head down on that pillar and he did himself in, he did that because he was sick of life. You've brought him up here, he's still got the head. Why didn't you give him a, a better head whilst he was up here in his next life? Well, he could say the same to you. Heaven's beginning to sound like one of the worst <laughs> drinks do's ever. It's awful. Everyone's sort of making kind of snipey comments and you're having to make conversations with people you don't really want to talk to. Yeah. God, a... I'm not sure God's the best host. I, I mean, I don't know if it is like Do this. you think I'm God just... would like this podcast? Um. Uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, you know, doing stuff that he's just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? <laughs> Sudoku and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea God's bored. Yeah. Is it a lot to keep him going? <laughs> oh, God. Playing solitaire on the computer. I don't know, yeah. But there's, I think there'll be just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here, whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London does me head in. Up there, it's going to be well busier than that. <laughs> and what are you... So you're all... You're, presumably you're all naked. Why has that happened? Well, because he didn't, he didn't want Adam and Eve to put clothes on, did he? He was annoyed at the snake and everything, and he, so you're all back to nature. You're all naked, so you're all walking around naked, right? Yeah, but so you, so you're up there. You, you, you know, you, 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 you're up there just naked, talking to um, Graham Norton and, and stuff like. But I'd have to get used to that. If I go up there and he goes, right, you're welcome to heaven and that, and I go, all right, I've made it to heaven. He goes, yeah. yeah. Right, uh, put your clothes in the bin bag. No, no, you, you, you're up there, you're already naked. Right, you, you I'd just... go, well, I'd say, so this is a bit odd. Why? You uh, wouldn't worry about it though, would you? Yeah, but it's just odd, isn't it? It's something different, and uh, something different, you know. Well, no, you've been naked you? before, you've been naked before. Yeah, but I don't roam about with people around me. They're naked. not people. You'd have to get used to that. They're, heaven, they're heavenly creatures. They're, no, but they're... I'd have to get, I'd say, look, can you just leave me for like four days just to get used to this idea? Four days, okay. Four days, just just to get used to wandering about, and I'd be in my house, and I'd sort what of look out. The house that I'm living in. Well, you don't live in a house in heaven. You just wander around you? on clouds, don't you? All naked and just... Oh, I, I, it's getting worse. I don't think it's that good. <laughs> it's not it's... fair, though, because all them lot have been up there ages with, like, a chance to get a bit of sun on the body and that, so they'll look all right. I'll be wandering about with, like, underpant marks and stuff. <laughs> underpant marks! <laughs> 
Rick, I know this is something you always get excited about. It's Carl's Diary. Can we have a jingle? I don't believe it! He's got a really good! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Woke up to the news about an elephant in India that had sore feet, so the locals have made it a big pair of slippers. Tried to look online for a picture, but I couldn't find anything. Sure they've made it two pairs of slippers. Uh, well, I'm only going by the facts in the diary, Rick, and I would have thought that they were absolutely bona fide and fact-checked and completely <laughs> yeah. accurate. I'd be very yeah. surprised if there's any mistakes in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure they've done this for an elephant before. Uh, I thought elephants have bad memories. No, well, no. But fair enough. I thought elephants have bad memories. If they have, I'm guessing it's going to keep forgetting where it's left them. I mean... Just to get the, if it's a myth, the myth completely wrong. Yeah. Elephants well, never forget. That's the saying. Not they always forget. So you can buy them slippers every year. Carl says, I haven't had a pair of slippers for years. He thinks they're dying out. No, I love slippers. I love a pair of slippers, I mate. love a pair of slippers, mate. Just wear socks. Oh, slidey on a car. No. Slidey on a, on a piece of lino. I know. And what about if you, you know, maybe opening a, a, a brand new box of thumbtacks? <laughs> you drop them all over the floor. You're trying to pick them up. Rick, I've got to pop across the road to get some milk. But well, it's, it's right opposite. I'm sure you're not going to go in my socks, though. I? I don't want to put on the shoes. It's mad. No, no, no. Pop some slippers on. Oh, perfect, yeah. Yeah. But you shouldn't go out in your slippers. Why not? Just across the street, mate, to get some milk. Because they're inside shoes. You don't go roaming about on tarmac in slippers. That's basic. But you yeah. don't have any slippers, so no, you're just tiptoeing across the street, you know. I put my shoes on. But you can, you can, you can, you can pop out and get the, uh, the, the paper and, you know, the, the bottle of milk, can't you, in the slippers without, without any harm done? No. Huh. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> That'll make it into the diary. <laughs> Tried to have a shower, but there was no water. <laughs> When he calls me, and things go yeah. wrong with the flat. But I like the fact that he tried to have a he tried to have a shower, but there's no water. How long did it take you before you realised he was there for twenty minutes? Yeah, after twenty minutes, he said Suzanne, should I be dry? Oh, yeah, I'm freezing cold. Yeah, no, no, you should you should be sort of wet and warm. <laughs> right, there's no water then. <laughs> Brilliant. I called the service charge people, but no one was about. Looked outside, but couldn't see any work going on. Great, in it. In India, they can sort out elephants with shoes. In London, we have no water. <laughs> <laughs> Hung about for a bit, but still no sign of any water. Brush my teeth just using the paste, and used the little bit that was in the kettle to have a wash. I was pretty chuffed that I thought of using that. Suzanne was a bit annoyed because she wanted a cup of tea. She said, go across the road and buy a big bottle of water. Not in your socks. Pop some slippers on. Go across the road and buy a big bottle of water, she said. I never thought of that. <laughs> Oh. You had a wash using the water that's in the in bottom the of the kettle. Yeah, well, that's clean, isn't it? But how much is any little drop in there? No, it's a big kettle. So what, did you just wash your face? Yeah. So you didn't you didn't wash your body or anything? Your genitals well, were you couldn't, filthy. could you? You've got to look at what, what you can do with the water available. People in Africa and that shot of water aren't wasting it, saying, oh, the feet are a bit dirty. They drink it. What do you mean? Add a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the uh, double glazing people. Yeah. You say that, pe scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that they found out that it's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were 20 years ago. So... It's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom, because of like people, keep, people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right? Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. It's all rubbish. So, so it's also, it down. It's it's also measured pushed. against sea level. It's not measured about when you get, otherwise they'd just dig a big hole, wouldn't they, and go, right, it's down to here. If the, the, the no, peak but is it, measured at, against at the end of the day, sea though, level. Does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun, he's <laughs> not going to go, oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Going to be shattered. <laughs> so it, don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else, though, that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there, and someone got near the top, and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the... Cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag. I had to go back. No, the, their hand hit the bit of rock and it went like, ding. I'm like, what's that? Ding, ding. Put another hand up. Ding, ding. Piano under there. 
They don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. Someone's been tipping. Well, oh, <laughs> right. Up average. Okay. There's, the council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're not going to sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, just, I'll tell you what, yeah. Just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days. <laughs> and it may, you may die. But just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused you've confused a few things there because I think the the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there, yeah. and everyone said, "I don't understand how's a piano doing up here." And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, had dragged a, oh, dragged right. a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance. Yeah, but thought I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again, and just left it up there. Yeah. It wasn't you know bloody tipping or aliens or anything. My dad used to bury things in the garden because the council used to charge for like washing machines and and mangles and and cookers uh, and pets so i'm just thinking in millions of years when they dig that up they think that dogs used to cook and yeah, like do yeah. washing up and things yeah i love the idea of burying utensils i think of the hole big enough to to bury a washing machine or a mangle so whoever kind of bought that house after your your yeah, dad they got a little treating store yeah lovely little um themed rockery <laughs> yeah the weather is weird this morning. One minute it's sunny, then it's thundering, then hailstones, then it's sunny again. People will be saying it's global warming. I don't really know what that means. Everything's changing all the time, innit? I wonder if years ago, when we first came out of the sea and we walked on land upright, did people blame the weather for that? Good point, uh, no, no. It's so stupid. Yeah, ridiculous. We didn't come out of the sea and instantly start walking around like humans and go, oh, can you believe it? We were swimming around, we were having a whale of a time. Do you know what? I blame the weather. No, but... Now they would, if that happened. It's the same way, say like, um, evolution, right? We talk about it a lot, right? Mm. Now, years ago, I don't know how it happened, but some whale had legs, <laughs> right? Yeah. This is how it started. Before he was a whale, yeah. Whales started off with legs, they that's right. They were rolling right. about on, on the beach front, right? Anyway, it worked out that, you know, they didn't like it or whatever. Get back in. Now, say if that happened again now... Right. Say if someone's born and they say they always say don't they check for lumps and stuff. Right? Make sure you haven't got any lumps. Now say well, if sorry, I, sorry, who says this and what what what's the what like magazines and doctors and that what, always say what, what, check when for you're lumps. first born? Um Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, but Ar all, arbitrary decision yeah, that answer. Yeah, yeah. But Go all, on. all I mean is now, say if like our evolution thing is kind of like the next level is for us to have three legs because we're, we're that busy on the world now. But it doesn't work like asking. that. Why would it work like that? Because that's nature, isn't it? It deals with it. If people are getting stressed out and getting achy legs a lot because they're going, well, what you're doing there is you're using two legs like you've got three. You need another one. But the problem is... No. Say if, finish. Say if someone grew a leg now because it's like, well, we need three legs. Yeah, but... Let him finish. finish. Okay. People would go, oh, I found a lump. Right, and the doctor would go, oh, whip that out. Now, that could be a third leg that's growing. But, Carl, evolution doesn't work like that. It does Some, work Suddenly like that. something isn't born with a perfectly formed third leg that can be passed on. I know, it's a lump. It starts off like a lump, and, and if you left it alone, yeah. it would eventually, over a bit of time... Uh, no, over many, many millions of years. Yeah, but, but it grows as another leg, but we're not letting that happen anymore. It also wouldn't happen. It, 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 limbs don't work like that either. They do if you keep putting extra pressure on two legs. Carl, you're, you're... Honestly, what you imagine the process of evolution and natural selection to be is... I, I, it's beyond me. It's no, incredible. No, but it depends what whatever your surroundings are, that's what you change to, isn't it? Like the... Well, the, you don't, you, we don't change to it. You're either selected or you're not. So... Uh, it, oh. What happens is there's a genetic throw-up. So something's born, uh, you know, a llama's born with a slightly longer neck. And if that gets, you know, the leaves that are slightly higher up and it survives, it lives longer, it passes on its genetic material. Um, uh, soon, if that works, now over millions and millions of years, uh, that they're the dominant species, a new species uh, uh, um, is thrown up with a slightly longer neck. Uh, and so on and so on. And it's mm. gradual. It's just a slight no, advantage. No, sometimes it happens quicker than that. There's been animals that have had eyes and then they go, oh, they don't need them, they go in the space of a fortnight. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> what no, what are you talking about? There's a lizard somewhere where it's roaming about in the dark and it used to have eyes and they used to be like, what, why have we got eyes and that? What's the point in having these? Because we're keeping them open. And they were getting more tired. 
Because at the end of the day, if your eyes are open, do you know what I mean? Blind people can stay up longer than a someone with eyes. <laughs> Keep going. I want to follow this through to its natural right, conclusion. Keep right. going. Keep going. There is no. There is nothing to do. Right. Uh, right. The first signs of you getting tired, you go. Oh, my eyes. I can hardly keep them open. Yeah. So a blind person doesn't get that because they can roam about with them short like so that. So they never sleep, do they? So, blind people. Well, they sleep, but not. They don't need as much because their eyes aren't stinging. All guessing. All guesswork and all nonsense. I mean, all nonsense. Well, hang on. Fair enough. Okay, let's ex- even if we accept that to be true of blind people, what what was happening with the lizards? The lizards were going. I can't believe it. this is mad. We don't need our eyes. We're down underground. What's the point? Over. Jeff, Bill, let's just no longer use eyes. Well, they were just like, um, in a way, it's better if we keep our eyes shut to keep the soil out and stuff. Um, and then over time, they were like, oh, my eyes are stuck. Like the time <laughs> when for uh, a fortnight, you said. No, 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 well, no. It's over hundreds of millions of years. And the other thing is, it's not the case that there's no will. To evolution, what happened was that they a, a, a blind one had no disadvantage, so he was selected um, uh, uh, better than one with eyes that maybe would find it irritating or or, or getting in the way. You know, just like um, a, a snake, it's not a disadvantage for a snake to lose its legs because it it's it selected and and then it's an advantage because don't they they can get into places that, they, you know, legs would get in the way. Like I've said before, right, you see, like, a little fella, like a, a midget or a dwarf or something. Right. Who's to say that that isn't the way we should be? Do you mean, how do we know that... Well, everybody looks at them and goes, oh, look, little fella. But really... It doesn't matter. If if we were all like that, the world would be a better place because it's bigger, so there's more to see. Whereas for us, we're, we're getting bigger all, all the time. The world isn't growing, so there's less to see for us. So for a midget, the world is brilliant. So I'd say it'd be good if we do go backwards as opposed to forwards. Instead of us getting bigger all Steve, the time... Steve, do you want a cup of tea? No. I'm not sure, mate. I'll leave you to it. Um, do you know what I mean, though? Have we, got, we haven't got any... I've only, we've only got instant coffee as well. No, yeah, I but, might pop out for something. But what I mean is, they always say well, like I'll the, make it. the body's it. No, no, thanks, mate. But tell me when he's finished. I'm oh, just right, saying right. the body's getting bigger, and instead of going forward, no then, sugar for me, thanks. Uh, Do you want milk though? Yeah, yeah, milk. Forget it. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it, and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And they'll be what? Bigger. They'll be like rampaging around the cities, will they? You like, did, I'll tell you just, what though, right? Now, I'm getting worried now because... The stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean, though? Like a proper paranoid sort of, it, one of those people that soon going to live in a loft covered in tin foil. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the, you know, and yeah. Suzanne's <laughs> having to put on a, some sort of space suit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have to polish each bean. That's what, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, uh, think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said. Yeah. That they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a the lunchbox with a chocolate bar, within an hour it was gone, right? And they say, now these germs love chocolate and Did stuff. this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? Anyway, it's unbelievable. Uh, is it Ted? He <laughs> went, what? <gasps> right. I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ. I came, it's gone. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, that. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one, see if it happens again. So in the future, you're running around and germs are... Eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Went to bed and chatted about food to Suzanne. I said it would be best if our bodies could be run on something like coal. That way you wouldn't get fat, people, because you wouldn't be eating for enjoyment. You'd just be eating to give you energy. Suzanne said, why do you always take the nice things out of life? 
Because sometimes to think about the future, you, you, it's not going to be all good, is it? Look at the way we have to do things now that we sort of go, oh, I'm sick of this. But they do it for your own good. But you try and oh. change the laws of the universe. Based on arbitrary whims. No, but yeah. we're always eating stuff. That's one of the things we do now, isn't it? As soon as we find a new creature, like that frog, that's been hidden away for, like, millions of years, you get someone who go, I wonder if we can eat that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's it, Everything that's walking on the world, they sort of see what powers it's got. Uh, what, what powers what, it's got? No, like, if it can jump far, um, you know, is it poisonous? Can you get anything out of it to save people? And yeah. then, can we eat it? They're the three things that they do with a new frog. <laughs> Any creature. So what are they? Can it jump fast? Yeah. Has it is got it any poisonous? Poison in it that it's... you can use to get rid of illnesses. Yeah. Can you eat it? Because That's the more, first more... three questions anyone asks, do it they? It seems to be the way because you look at menus and that how they're getting bigger and bigger now, and that's only because we're finding more and more species of stuff. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. If you look at some stuff on a menu, that that octopus you eat. At some point, that would have gone through the list of, right, what does it do? What's it got in it? What does that ink do? What's it taste like? Can it jump? Can it, whatever, it, well, they've done tests on it, haven't they, when we said about it being in a, getting in a jam jar or something. Yeah. So it's all part of it. Everything's been tested. Everything. But I think, what the is that the first you hear of a new fangled food, do you think that uh, in ancient civilization they didn't, they didn't do this. They didn't try an oyster or, or spear a fish or Yeah, because they, there wasn't that much other stuff knocking about at that time. Right. We've got loads of stuff, so why are we messing about with some new frog? It's all like, people just like showing off, don't they? Leave the frogs, let them get busy and have loads of them, eat the chickens, when we run out of them, move on to the frog or whatever. But why, why have all this on the go? Do you know what I mean? It just makes it... I, I, I hate going out for a meal now, because it's like, what, what are you having? Oh, I'm sick of it. Look at it all. <laughs> and then you're forced into people going, oh, have you had the new frog? <laughs> no, I don't want it. I was happy with chicken. That's what I mean. I... Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Have you ever been out, Rick, and someone's been trying to force frog on you? Never. I've never been forced frog in my life. Although I did go for a meal once with Carl. We went there, and uh, he had the Oriental hors d'oeuvres, uh, I recommended, right? Um... And uh, he was trying to get this little oyster, right, off the shell, right? And he was going to get stuck to its house, right? And uh, I looked round, and his eyes were watering, and he was choking, and he was drinking water. I said, what? And he said, I ate that. And it was a big blob of wasabi, Oof. right? And I said, why did you put it all in the one to end? He said, I thought it was a mushy pea. <laughs> why would they put one mushy pea? Was it hardcore, the wasabi? It felt like my head was caving in. <laughs> <laughs> That was just Ricky squeezing it, wasn't it? <laughs> Between courses. So with that, though, is, uh, you know hot food, yeah. why you get addicted to really hot food, is the pain is actually your, it's killing taste buds. And then endorphins are released in the brain, like, you know, a morphine derivative to to uh, sort of go, it's all right, oh, calm the pain. So you actually get ad addicted to that sort of, you know, what but happens. Why, why would you want to kill your taste buds? But new ones come back. Well, yeah, I think they, you, yeah, I think you... Straight away. Well, I don't know how long it takes. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. No, it's just, is that the chef sort of going, oh, I'm serving some right rubbish tonight. Give him some of that kusabi. <laughs> kusabi! Oh, God, I'm tonto! <laughs> oh, God! Back to the diary. At lunchtime, I went to a local cafe and had an omelette. An old woman, who was about 70-ish, was in there eating pizza. It didn't look right. No. I know what you mean there, actually. Old people eating pizza seems a bit weird. What about an old Italian lady eating pizza? Would that be right? Uh, no, I'd expect her to have lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried it could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. I, there's so many elements in this. There's a, there's a woman who can read 
She used to read Mal's that mind. again. Read that again. Okay, we're gonna have an instant I'll, replay no, now. I'll tell any you what, psychologist I'll tell you listening, or psychiatrist, or just well, anyone, listen to this. What Carl was put in his diary. Okay, Steve, away you go. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago. When I worked in a studio making cassettes, some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band... Or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them to sort of use during a thing where they do mind reading and stuff. So right. you get a, a, recording, a recording of, the, of it. Uh, yeah. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. And a dog was sort of looking worried and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was it looking what worried? What do you mean pick up vibes? Depends what you mean by pick up vibes. Do- dogs pick up loads of vibes and stuff. I read the other day how they can tell if someone's got cancer and Well, that. they can... They, well, yeah. That, so that, that's, the, it's, the, it's one There's a voice. science behind that. They they can smell different... Uh, yeah. the, at a cellular level. Yeah, so know, it's the same Because it's sort of like thing. 70 times... Stri- but no, no, no. They can't go... The, the dog wouldn't even know you're an idiot. The dog... Uh, the even dog a, was sort of looking weird and stuff. It and then knew. She, she it was, knew. She but, was looking at me. But you, were they looking? I'm not being funny. Were they looking at the roundness of your head? Do you no, think? No, they were just just looking at me, and I was sort of panicking a bit. And the more that I was thinking, she's reading my mind. I was thinking she she knows that I know that she's reading my mind. So I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind. Thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on a beach. <laughs> what he was thinking. No, just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh, no, hang on, I'm getting it all tangled up. I've got a cross line here. <laughs> but why were you worried that she was reading your mind? Because you weren't thinking of anything, un, you know, no, un- but, but, Oh, no, don't, don't, oh, please. No, 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 no I'm just trying to get in his it, mind. It his doesn't rationale. work, Carl. No, 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 no one his, can read your mind. No, but wait, wait, what I mean is, even if, you know, let's assume that you thought she could read your mind, why did you think that there was anything wrong with finding out what you were thinking? Because she knew, she'd have known that you knew that she could read minds. So she, if she read your mind and all you were thinking was she can read my mind, she'd think, what? Well, of he course, knows I can if read she my mind. really could read your mind, she's yeah, going, but- there's Carl there trying to make me uh, think that it's the dog. I know he's thinking of the dog. No, but when you sort of uh, try and think of normal things, you think of mental things, don't you? So I was like. Oh, hold on, let's let that go. Go on, go on. No, I just mean, like, you're going, oh, God, I best not watch what I'm thinking then. What it were you might thinking? Tell, what tell were you me thinking? some of the mental things. No, there was loads of think. things that was in there. Like, there was an old woman who used to annoy me in there who used to give me socks all the time. <laughs> and Socks? Socks. She used oh, to always socks. make loads of socks and she'd be bringing them in. And no matter what I did, no matter how much I sort of said, look, I'm sick of your socks, she kept bringing them in all the time. And they had, like, pictures on and that. I didn't want socks with pictures on. So, um,. So I used to, I might have been sort of stood there going, oh, there she is with her socks, I'm sick of her. Now, if she can sense that, she'll go over to her and go, watch him, stop bringing him socks socks, or whatever. No one can read minds, no one can contact the dead. Say like me, right, if I sometimes come in in the room and that and I'm fed up, you go, oh, Carl's fed up, I haven't even said anything. So it's because, just that, but that's it? cause you because you look like a miserable bastard. Yeah, yeah and we can we know what that means. We're we're, we're human and we understand right. facial so movements. So it's a bit and like moves. that. It's a bit like that. It's a level down from no, that. No, 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 no. She should be able to read your mind if you're locked in a safe and she doesn't know who you are and she doesn't know whether there's someone in there. No, that's that, what the that, double blind test that is. That would never work, would it? Because that means she'd never get a rest. That's like so you're together. making up the rules. You're making up the rules. Oh no, the thing is, that's what these people do. Go, oh no, I have to hold your hand. Oh, I have to. You have to write it down. Well, why? Why do you? It's the same as these mediums that contact the dead. They go, oh, I'm getting someone. Just ask him who he is. Just give us his full name and address. It's ridiculous. I know the fact that these these dead people give him cryptic clues. Ask him about the uh, toaster. What's your name? What's your name? Can't say my name. Might be an uncle. Just give me your fucking name. Back to Carl's diary. Friday the thirty first. I read that some fella had been having an affair. His wife found out, so when he was asleep, she superglued his knob to his stomach, one of his bollocks to his leg, and glued his arse cheeks together, then chucked him out. If Suzanne did that, I would definitely not get back with her. Saying that, I would have woke up if someone was putting superglue on me arse. I'm quite a light sleeper. Is that what she did, is it? Yeah, that's why I'm a bit cautious about wearing earbuds every night. The, uh... 
plunge things. <laughs> Earbuds. Earbuds. Right? So that's a, no, so that's not a called right. Plunge things. He's like he makes up words. They taught a chimp to talk, and the chimp had a better grasp of language after about a few years than Carl. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's why I won't wear buds and plunge things. <laughs> I phoned him up the other day. Uh, uh, he went. He went. Oh, just tried out those new earplugs that mould to your ear. You can't hear a thing except your own voice. And I went. All oh, right, they're good, aren't they? He went. Yeah. He said it's weird hearing your own voice, and it because you're hearing it as other people hear it. I went. No, you're not. He went. You are. He said you don't usually hear your own voice because usually when you talk, you're talking over it. <laughs> woke up at nine fifty-five a.m. As soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, "Did I tell you about?" <laughs> I just think of him opening his eyes and looking at him. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so he's, he's, he, he opens his eyes, he looks at Suzanne, she looks at him. What question, Rick, do you think he immediately asks his girlfriend? Go on. What question do you well, think? I Have can't. a quick guess. Um, uh, um, am I dreaming? I woke up, I said to my girlfriend, did I tell you about... I woke up, I looked at Suzanne, she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> did I tell you about the immune system? Suzanne started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, God. It's so I was thinking that. Springing into action, he zips up his eyes are like... Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, <laughs> shut up, Carl. Put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. Was talking to Suzanne about how it's odd that Sundays are meant to be the day of rest. I thought God was meant to be born on a Sunday. Or was it the seventh day that he finished making the world? <sighs> Imagine how good the world could have been if he'd given it an extra day. Sometimes <laughs> it's best to give yourself a deadline, though, so you don't faff about. <laughs> I looked at Suzanne. She was leaning back on the bench with her eyes shut with the sun on her face. I never got an answer to my question. Pretending to be, to be asleep. asleep. I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well, ah! he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> Isn't it? Now then, would you walk? W how would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk? So you're basically walking forwards. I or, reckon I'd walk sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! He solved it again. He's thought it through. <laughs> oh. Got home and read my magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news, that that was in uh, a proper newspaper in the end. The story used the description to describe it. There was a picture. I think it was a fairly decent description. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look alright if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders. Cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, Cockroach I mean, men, spider men, what are you talking about? I haven't Don't had you... a normal conversation with you for a year. No. It's getting worse, I think. I think, I think it's because you've left and you've got too much time on your hands and you live in your head for sort of like maybe eight hours a day and then you offload when someone calls you or when you call me or, or Suzanne gets the, the brunt of it. But I mean, I, I, I mean, I I don't know. I really would like to, and a, a nice. I just still think he's brilliant, right? But I would like to get a little psychiatrist in, just mm. to. Would you mind seeing no, a psychiatrist? No, it's just there's nothing wrong. These are all ideas, aren't they? You look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery, yet they're getting by, aren't they? They 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 have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff powers going about? So these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men or or whatever. That but no, you mean. said if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could use the, where's them. The, you've left a big bit out? But when that one-inch cockroach becomes a six-foot bloke w wearing a, a jacket, it's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well. 
But I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Cockroaches can live without a head. For... Could they still sort out the rubbish if they've got no heads? They could, couldn't they? Uh, Except they, if they were, because you know you want to use them as builders and dustmen, they couldn't whistle at pretty girls, could no, they? No, but they wouldn't be doing that job, they're just doing the bins. Okay. It's ants that are doing the building. Okay, I'm sorry. And are they getting up early? Are they disturbing you? They don't you? sleep, do they? But then they get you up even earlier. You hate when the builders get you up at seven, then go to breakfast. Yeah, but it wouldn't go on as long, would it? Because the ants would be working hard. So it'd probably be one day of madness, but then it'd be finished. As opposed to builders just stood about whistling, doing nothing, going on for months. And is this ant six foot? Uh, no. No. About three. Three foot. So how many of them are there? About, uh, about 30 of them. And what do they look like? Are they just a giant ant with um, a... Ant, on. Um, just get on with it. I mean, it'd be weird for a bit, but with anything you get, you get used to seeing but things, Carl, don't you? again... This isn't an idea, it isn't a theory, you can't, you can't put this into practice because it doesn't exist. I it's, know, I'm just saying It's like, it's, well, well, I mean, you wishing for ant builders is the same as you wishing that you didn't have to do any building and your house was just perfect, or you could just wish for it. What's the difference? Why go through this elaborate... <laughs> but th- th- what I'm saying weird, is that it? your wish is... It, 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 you're taking... You're not taking shortcuts. You see, it's the same people who goes, oh, I wish I'd go back in time and put a thousand pounds on the Grand National. What you mean is you wish you had a million pounds. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. don't worry about the time travel bit and put in a... Do you wish you were rich? Yeah. It's like... So you wish you didn't have to have builders round. That's what you're wishing for. So this elaborate thing of getting a three-foot ant with a hard hat... Today I got an innovations catalogue. I thought I'd keep it because I like the stuff they sell in it. Brackets, one big slipper. What's that, one big slipper? It's just if you don't go out much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't like slippers. No, I know, but th- th- I think they're a good good idea because they're just there to keep your feet warm. But why one big? Why not two sim- smaller ones? So you can walk around? Yeah, one big slipper's just making it painful It's more awkward. sort of roomy, isn't it? Why it's do you think that's a good invention, one big slipper? How is that better just, than two smaller slippers? Because the problem is with slippers, right? You're, you've already said how you nip across the road in them, right? So you muck them up and you have to buy some more. There's no way you'll be nipping to the shops in that one big one. That will always stay where it should be, by the sofa next to the telly. And you go, right, I'm in for the night now, where's my slipper? <laughs> <laughs> but can I just put my feet inside a, a cushion cover or something? What? If you want. But it's, it's only cheap, why not get one? <laughs> You're right. They're, they're only cheap. Why not get one? But then, Carl, why not get one big glove? If you're not going out, right, just get one big glove. You don't have to do anything. Just one big glove. Pop your hands in one big glove. I'm not going out. Gloves, you have to go out and touch stuff. Just one big glove. Why, 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 why? Yeah. Well, yeah, why bother putting trousers on? You've got to put uh, legs in both. Why not just wear a skirt? Yeah. Well, well, pop, pop a skirt on, yeah. Just put on a lady's skirt or a lady's dress. It's one piece, isn't it, then? Yeah. Just pop around in there. One big monocle, thing. don't wear glasses, wear one big monocle. Yeah. I mean, it's stupid having two gloves, two gloves, two slippers, is mental. Anyway, um, I had a good sleep last night, so much so that I woke up before my legs did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means! This has happened before when I was younger. We used to have a phone in the bathroom so that if anyone called and we were on the toilet, you'd still be able to be available. My bedroom was next to the bathroom and the phone rang one morning. My mum and dad were at work and my brother and sister were out somewhere and the phone woke me up. So I jumped out of bed to answer it but the bottom half of my body was still asleep and I fell to the floor. <laughs> it's horrible. Has that ever happened to you? I, well, hang on. I yeah. had to crawl for a bit and reached for the phone. It was a fella selling some bread to my dad for the shop. By the end of the call, my legs were working again. <laughs> but it's a weird sensation. What shop? My mum and dad used to have a butty shop. So Did they? Yeah. But the thing is... Uh, just on the floor, top half, I had to sort of crawl, carrying my weight, and my legs were just like they weren't there. It's really, really weird. You mean you woke up with two dead legs, two pins and needles, mm. knee legs? Are you sure you, were, you weren't wearing just one big slipper? 